Hello folks, this is Learning Banjo here, and um, today we're going to show you how we install some railroad spikes on this BG150F Gold Tone Banjo. Um, as you can see, it's a very nice banjo. I got it about a month ago. I've been learning to play it uh, since. And here you can also see that uh, the spikes have already been installed. But that's because I forgot to film the video uh, of the banjo before installing them. That's Cliff. He loves the banjo, not the sound, but he likes sniffing it. He's a really nice dog, uh, an English bulldog of two years. And um, he can do some tricks. Let's make him sit. start out by marking where we want to put in the railroad spikes. For this we used a caliber and uh, we measured out two-fifths uh, of the fret and uh, made a little marking with a pencil. There's the little marking um, where we marked up the string where the hole is supposed to go and um, as you can see there's, we tapped into the board using one of the railroad spikes uh, for a marker and uh, now we can drill a I want to show you how small the spikes are. I've got fairly big fingers and I need some assistance um, handling these because well to be honest I have 10 thumbs when it comes to small things like that. To make sure that uh, we don't drill the hole too deep we mark the drill with some tape uh, to know when to stop. Now that Ulf has become an expert, um, we're making a little commercial here. We're using Loctite. Which is a Danish product, which not many people know. It's um, fast hardening glue and um, it's very fluent and very easy to work with. Keep it in the fridge to prevent it from drying out while you're storing it. But um, uh, it's not that expensive. so. Um, if it should dry out, it's just, well, it's more annoying to find a dried out tube in the in the fridge than it is uh, spending the money on buying a new one. So uh, buy, buy a tube when you're at it and always keep an extra in the fridge. Well, we have figured out how deep the railroad spike needs to go and um, Wolf keeps correcting it with pliers because it seems to turn a little when he taps it. Um, and just really need some fine-tuning and just sort of keep working on it in a, in a very cautious manner not to drive the spike in too deep um, this requires some patience and um, Wolf is luckily a very patient man that's about it Looks good. A little further, perhaps. Remember, we put tape on the fretboard to prevent the super glue from leaving residue on the wood. Um, we have to remove the tape again because otherwise, the glue will actually glue the tape onto the fretboard, and that would leave a mess for us to clean up. Also, the tape adds a little height to the fretboard, so it would be imprecise when we're trying to figure out how deep the rail uh, has to go. And um, well, we simply measure the height of the railroad spike by using the string as a gauge instead of a special tool. We're tapping very gently here, um, just going along very slowly to make sure that we don't dip the rail in too deep. Um, and still correcting it with pliers, it seems to turn a little every time we hit it and um, even though Wolf is a careful guy uh, it just keeps happening Science. no it ain't it's it's actually just a matter of being cautious when you do it it doesn't have to be that hard I watched a lot of videos before we started out doing this and I was kind of afraid that it would be really hard to do but it I, I think it's been going yeah. rather easily. First one came in a little bit too deep, so we're gonna have to tap that out. All right. 
You can look at the curve right there. Follow the curve right there. Yeah. And release. Easy. Next one. That one's pretty damn low, but hey, that oh, one's it's really fixed. Good. That one is really good. That one needs a little bit more. Yeah. So. Well, tapping the railroad spikes has created some bursts on them, and we want to remove them. So, Wolf is filing them away um, with a very small tool, and uh, we're not sure they cause any trouble, but just to make it all look and feel nice.